Okay. Uh, so now we're going more in depth into the malware in this case. We see. Uh, with uh, Mathieu Kazmarek's presentation. Yeah, we're switched. So you Thank have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, for the boring stuff. So I work for Verizon, but I do not speak on the behalf of Verizon. That's not that my team does not support me uh, with this presentation, just legal stuff, you know. But yeah, usual. So yeah, it's, this is not a marketing presentation or anything like that. No substantial attribution or... Sorry about that. So first, let's have um, a reminder of what is Wigin. There was a couple of articles about this. Uh, and basically, it is a, a malware that is used to collect information. And many people make a lot of buzz about uh, this uh, component. Uh, you have a launcher, a stager, sometimes a, ker uh, a kernel component, and user land component. Well, uh, this is like plugins. You do not care about that. This is just for persistent. This is completely disposable. Uh, stage one, stage two, it's just something you can change easily uh, to full uh, AV detection. Uh, then sometimes you have a driver. Why would you like, would you like a driver today? Uh, usually it's when you want to hide your communication within a legitimate uh, channel. For example, you, you have a web server and you want to infect it and to take some part of the communication of the web server. So you will hook the network stack, take some packets that are with a blueprint, and to do that, you need a driver, usually. But just for that, uh, back in the days, they always put a driver. Do not always use it. But, but today, the la or I don't know if today, but the most recent infection I saw was only user land infection. So do not be afraid by rigging as, oh, it's driver, it's complex, no. Most of the interesting stuff is there. So on top of that, uh, like plugins or any uh, malware that are really widely used, there are modules so that you can make it evolve or adapt it according to your target. Uh, and those modules are stored within some kind of virtual file system. It's just a, a storage place. Again, it's not something complex. It's just a storage place. So right. just a reminder. So why do I present Wagin at botnet, at botconf? Because it is a botnet. It is not a rat. It is not uh, a usual Trojan with uh, command and control, stuff like that. So if you have IOCs about Wagin with IPs, right, just of hardly any use, because uh, Wigin is, when you install a Wigin node, you configure outbound connections, peers, and there is some kind of routing protocol like BGP that relays the communication over the network, over the botnet, like a peer-to-peer -peer botnet, peer-to-peer -peer botnet. So uh, concerning those connections, you can have anyone, just need a module for a connection. Can be TCP, can be UDP, can be NMET pipes, can be uh, cookies, can be files, can be USB keys, can be anything you want. Um, on the other hand, to receive messages, you need to open ports. So you need a, a module that open a connection or listen to the connection. Not much than that. So this is just for the networking part. But on top of that, you have um, a trust layer, a trust overlay. And uh, actually, to send uh, packets, message to another node, you need to have a public key, a private key that is trusted, and which the public key is trusted on the other side. 
So oh, pretty common, like SSH servers, you know. You have the private key, you connect to your, your, your server because it tr your non-host uh, trusted key, stuff like that. So basically, this is it here. So uh, ah, here, the VPN overlay. Each node has a virtual IP because when you are operating this kind of botnet, uh, you do not care about the actual IP of the uh, of the infected machine. You just need to have some IDs that you maintain internally. So each node has a virtual IP. And so that you can, uh, for example, uh, root, you're, you're at, at home. There are a bunch of connections everywhere. But you know that you want to uh, update the filters that collect uh, emails on a server somewhere. You just have the IP of the server somewhere. You send the update, and it will be routed over the botnet to other server. This is how it works. Uh, and you have master node. Master node is a node that you have at home. That is the, the node that controls everything. Actually, there are several master nodes. There are a master node per no two master nodes per victim. And uh, well, let's see that. So this is typically what you have. Victim A that uh, got infected. Uh, from victim A, someone infected victim B. Uh, and from victim B, you can go to victim C. And you have a master node that control everything here. Uh, so I've put some XX because you can, in don this is, oh yeah, do not, do like my respected uh, uh, antivirus researcher that do, who is on the virtual IP of the node. This is nonsense. This is a virtual IP. I just put XX just um, to anonymize stuff because if you are the attacker, you can know which is this victim according to the IP. But this is virtual IP. It's not an actual IP. Uh, this is. Interestingly, this is in Germany, or this was in Germany. This was in um, uh, Ireland, I believe, and uh, victim C was in Sudan. So you have this kind of network that go about everywhere in the world, and from where you can operate a very big botnet. Very big. This is one victim. When you have a Wigini, typical Wigin injection, looks like that. You have a master node that have control over everything. Dashed lines are trust. That is, everybody trusts the master node. Uh, the other lines are actual connections. And what you can see is that in that picture, everyone, about everyone trusts the master node, but I do not have any a uh, strong line to the master node. This is because I did not find any connection, actual connection to the master node. I do not know from where it comes and how to reach it. This is, this is the actual command and control. And this is why IUCs about IP IUCs, domain name IUCs about regions are really of no use. In this network, you can see particular nodes like this one, this one, this one, that seems to collect information from collectors. And this is it. That is, Wagon is like um, mm, a sim. Uh, when you have collectors for events uh, distributed over your network and that are centralized at some point. And actually, those particular nodes are concentrators and exfiltration points. In this infection, there was eight outbound uh, points. That is, eight points to go outside that victim. And I believe those, uh, those uh, exit nodes were actually going to other victims. So to, act, to really know where is that command and control, it is very difficult. 
So uh, I wanted to show that, to try to explain that to you, because in what I saw in public communication about Wigan, uh, they explain it just like any Trojan or any remote access tool, and this is really not it. When you deal with Wigan, if you ever deal with it, you have to draw this kind of map to hunt for each infected node. Because if you do like the usual stuff, uh, looking for the domain and con command and control and blocking the IP, you, 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 you won't stop the infection. Oh, but how does it work? Um, because to operate this kind of stuff and to have um, some kind of reliability over this network, you need a specific design. And this is designed on, uh, with a service-oriented architecture, SOA, with a RPC protocol, remote procedure call. And if you deal with Virgin, you know it because of this template. This is a, uh, an RPC. So it's not ID, IDS yet, but it will come. Uh, what is it? RPC. So, so this is a serialized data that you send to this virtual IP. So this is a local IP. Uh, it's not a local IP. Actually, it's a master reporting node, but say 1.27.00.2. This is the module that you want to query, and this is the handler you want to query. So basically, anything you want, you will do with Regin is send remote procedure call to either your local node or to a remote node. And everything is done with modules and handlers. You want to add an IP, you want to add a keyword, you just add a keyword to the module that under uh, mail interception. This is really how it works. And all the modules, like documented in uh, Simon Tetek and Kaspersky uh, uh, documents, are mostly related to uh, interception and collection of data. And it is pretty easily to write module. And this is what you should do. Because of this complexity, this way of working costs a lot. Because you have the malware, you will do some reverse engineering to know how you are impacted, what information are collected, and then you will write some tools to decode the information with the virtual file system and everything like that. And this takes days to test, to compile, to retest, to review, and you will go back to reverse engineering. This way is hard. Uh, this way is what I would recommend, because working is really well coded on this RPC architecture. And what you just need to do is to get some pointers on those RPC handlers and query the nodes. You want to have the data that is in the virtual file system, just query it. So this is malware in in instrumentation. And in the paper that uh, I submitted to BotConf, is uh, explained the details of the instrumentation. And this is what I want to show you, actually. Uh, OK. Uh, so typical example. Here, uh, create a stream. I query module 9 on the 5 to retrieve the connection list to the peer nodes. And you can do that as long as you have instrumentation of the working. So, yeah, uh, starting now, you can interrupt me and ask questions anytime. No question yet? Uh, 
So, how it works? Uh, this is for Paul. Uh, so I told you about instrumentation, rigging, uh, the SOA architecture. So basically, the first thing you need to know is the numbers, that module ID and that handler ID. And this is quite easily e easy to, to spot in rigging because uh, you need to instantiate modules. And this is how you do it. You just do module new with some parameters, with the module ID and the module object. And this part here is always the same. And it is you can even write a, a Yara rule to spot the module definitions. So here we have the definition for module 9 that I will tell you handle everything that is related to network. Then this is, um, not this one yet. Yeah. Then you define handlers, uh, module add handlers, and you have IDs for handlers. So this is how you collect the IDs for handlers. And you have the actual handler, that is this function. Then looking into the function, you will know that uh, the function with the D word, that will be then processed. So you have the actual signature of the handler. So I have the module ID, the handler ID, the Parameters I have to send it. I just now need to actually write it. So I take a pointer on module nine, for example. Or oh, what do I do here? No, it's not this one. Um, here. So let's say I want to query that under uh, 17 uh, of module 9. I know this is an IP, so I parse an IP. I put it in the stream, so write the word, pretty easy, yeah? And then send the stream to under 9, under 17. And what is interesting is that it actually works. So this is available on the internet. This is a, a code that do everything I just explained, uh, instrumentation. I load the library of Regin, take a few pointers to the uh, module management and stuff like that, write the code, and just have a nice uh, interface to query the under. So if I want to set, for example, um, uh, net set IP, it won't work. You will see why. Set IP, o, 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 2. So it's in there first, telling me. So this is actually this. So I just sent to module 9. I want to be the, I, the virtual IP o, 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 2. And tell me, oh, crypto key is not found. I told you before, you need a private and public key associated to your IP. So I will do that. Crypto key, uh, crypto um, change IP. IP zero 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 one one sixty nine zero zero zero. Two one sixty nine. Success. Okay. Just so I changed my IP. It's not fun, not yet. <laughs> no, I told you I have to uh, um, open port to communicate to receive data. So net. Add 
TCP in port 80. So uh, let, let's do net start first. So net start, I have nothing. Oh, I've already it open. Net listing. Yeah. So here I can see that module C three seven T three is listening on port eighty, and it is actually listening. And you know what? Actually, there there is a help. This is all the under are coded, and you can add more if you want. The source code is available on the internet. So and now for Paul who told that the demo never worked. Netcons, here I, so yeah, maybe you want to, so I, I configured the, an output connection to node IP 0002 uh, via module C373, that is actually TCP, to that actual IP, this is a, a, a real IP, this is the IP of this VM, on port 80. And then I will tell you about that one later. So I've configured something, and if I do something like netmsg002, uh, hello, maybe it will work. Hey. So I just sent a message from here to You have to trust me. Uh, more details. Uh, here, there is something strange. There is a 443. Another thing you need to know with working is that there are, when you, the nodes communicate, there is initialization channel and data channel. The data channel it is dynamically uh, initialized on this reception node. That is, if you look here, this one is currently established, but it has been opened on the reception of the initialization message. This is a protocol. Uh, the node that sends the message Tell the reception node, okay, I will send you data on that channel. So you can, for example, initiate channel with a DNS query and tells, open me a TC port on 443. This will be open dynamically and sent to the, and uh, then you will use the data channel to extend channel. So this is also tricky because when you see IOCs and uh, intelligence on Reagan, usually they'll talk about the initialization channel, but you also need to look at the data channel if you really want to have the communication. No question? Uh, I saw from your diagram that you have an IP, internal IP of the master node. Yeah. And you have a great framework to communicate. Have you tried to communicate with the master node? To send him a load, for example? Oh, well, I only do that on my uh, small laptop. Ah, I understand. So no life experiments with the origin. No real life experiment, we'll say. And about this master node. Um, because this is interesting. Uh, here. So I told you, a special, I, I've put XX here too. This is because you have uh, rigging networks are uh, organized on um, uh, slash eight subnetwork, virtual IPs. Always talk about, about virtual IPs. Do not do who is on those IP, this is stupid. I have to repeat it because people do that. Um, and this is how you can actually identify victims. Uh, because the master node is usually the first IP in the slash eight with ending seven and eight. So for example, uh, victim 50, the master node of victim 50 
will be 50.0.0.7. Uh, and there is a second, there are always two master nodes because of redundancy, and the second will be 50.0.0.8. Then you have two master reporting nodes. You do not see master reporting node because master controlling nodes have trust over everything. Master reporting nodes are trust by no one, but they can receive things from anyone. So they trust everyone. Those from master reporting node have uh, IPs, or uh, for example, 50006 and 50005, if I remember well. I do not know about one, two, and three, but I believe they are used uh, for specific purposes. Um, another question? Again, about master nodes, maybe? Uh, how, how much time do I have yet? Okay. Um, master nodes are really interesting because uh, I told you about those module IDs. Every module I have seen has an odd module ID. But, for example, 9, uh, C3, 73, always odd. But some even module IDs are referenced in the code. And they have a special role because uh, you can, if you have an even module ID, you can send message unsigned, and they are trusted. So I don't know if you're part of um, a company that do some control intelligence. You can try to impersonate modules using even module ID and communicate with the master node because to communicate with the master node. You need to have a private key that is trusted with, with associated public key that is trusted by the master node. But if you have even module IDs. And this can be actually supported in the IDA here. Uh, where is it? 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 Uh, oh, maybe here. Yeah, what you new? Yeah. This is very particular. In wh when you do some reverse engineering, you, you will understand why this per pecu peculiar compilation pattern. You see here, RBX equals one, I will tell you that. And to actually set a, a constant value, you do one plus E doesn't make sense. Usually you put just F, not one plus E. And note that F is odd and E is even. Why? Because the, uh, here, here, here. This is RBX. It is defined here. I believe that this is a compilation constant either set at 1 or 0. 0 when you have a master node, so everything will be compiled with even module IDs with more power that are trusted everywhere, some kind of backdoor. And when you have a slave node that will, you will put uh, on, on victim side, you will set the compilation pattern at 1. Know that. Uh, from what I saw, uh, Wagin nodes are compiled uh, a few hours before infection. So this really makes sense. So I did not really experiment with even uh, module IDs, but if somebody wants to do and to try, please. Other stuff? Do I have still time? Yeah. Mm. Because I had some spare style slides, if you do not have any question. Oh. Uh, this flag you mentioned, uh, will it be test 
at the source node, at each node in the path to the master node? Because you said you would be able to communicate because you don't need uh, the signing key. Yeah. But uh, where is it checked? Is, if it's only at the start, of, start node where you could fake the flag, it's uh, useless. Actually, so um, to be precise, um, so module nine, check uh, that your RPC is signed uh, with uh, RSA uh, um, public key. And at that access control, there is a white list of modules that bypass the signing process. And this white list is actually uh, stored on the, uh, on the virtual file system, you know, as argument. And this is what I collected. So you have it on the paper. Uh, where is it? Here. Yeah. Exactly. So this is what I collected from different uh, virtual file systems. Those are the module IDs that can buy, that I believe bypass the um, signing um, uh, verification and also supported where are those module references in the source code, in the binary code. I don't have the source, unfortunately. Uh, and Zero seems to be able to manage modules. Uh, Four seems to be able to manage connections. Uh, e to edit the cryptographic parameters. Maybe add some private keys. This is why I'm not sure, but it really looks like a backdoor or some kind of hidden stuff by the developer to keep an hand on, uh, on, on Node with some hidden evil stuff. So if you are contracting Regin to do your stuff, I do not know. Uh, take a look at that. It's not really sane stuff. Or ask your contractor, why did you put that in the code? Just use less. On the other hand, if you are a part of control intelligence, you can look into that. It might be interesting. Because as far as I know, nobody claimed uh, Wagon infection. So I believe first taker, first owner, something like that. Thank you. So I'm Peter Glass, and I'm working for Looking Class. Um, I have a question: If you can potentially write a crawler to check your local network or even on the internet for regional infections, would that be technically possible? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I believe you can write some kind of scanner, but writing a scan. Uh, so two questions: uh, Can you actually write it? Yeah, definitely. Just try to communicate. You will see some different pattern in the communication. For example, the packet will be eaten. Like for, uh, for example, your bros has a blueprint for any uh, channel. And if you put the blueprint, the, the packet will be eaten and you won't have the, the return of the HTTP gate, for example. So you can do almost the same with Regin, that is try to initiate the communication. You you will send some packets and it won't have the usual behavior because it will be hidden. This is one way. The second question is, can you do it without being notized? This is another story. Because, uh, yeah, if you really want to do it seriously, you, you want to do it without being notized. So, yeah, you would need to be somewhere on the backbone, uh, send some TCP packet, and we intercept it. Uh, so, yeah, it is possible. I did not do that, but it is possible. Another question? So, if you want to catch up later at the break, no problem.
Oh, I have two minutes left. You want me to? Uh, do I have slides left? Defense perspective, yeah. So, why do I say that? Yeah, do not use it. Do not. If you use IOCs, be cautious. It, you need to know how it works be, before using IOCs because you, have, you, you will have false confidence using IOCs with Reiki. Uh, rather use structural de uh, detection. So this is what I did uh, in a former position. Uh, I, to detect Reiki, I actually used the file structure rather than the file names, for example. Uh, Paul has uh, published uh, uh, a way to, to detect VFS a script. This is quite cool, and this is the way you should do it. Do the same for network communication. Hunting, yeah, if you want to hunt it, just draw the map and try to go from a node to another node, and so on. Because this is a botnet, this is not uh, usual command and control infrastructure. Uh, if you are an attacker, check about those uh, even nodes. This is really strange. Um, move to hard coded public keys rather than even uh, numbers. This is just bad. Yeah, watermark the, in, in the communication at just use list. Do it after the RCFI de decryption. Uh, People who, who understand that will understand me. Uh, yeah, not interesting. And if you do some counterintelligence stuff, yeah, you can actually, instead of decrypting the traffic uh, from infected nodes, you can actually activate logging on nodes with your associated RPC. This is much more easier than decrypting, uh, doing uh, pickups and decrypting the traffic. Uh, Identify adversary intent with uh, uh, the function that are shipped at the nodes. And know that you can always use, for example, the filter keywords. This is, for example, the keywords that are used on the a mail servers to filter out mails that won't be processed by Regin. So if you put any one of those keywords in your mail, it will be filtered out and won't be intercepted. On the Wagon stuff of uh, iPhone. Yeah, I know this is funny, funny word. This is why I, I keep that for the last slide. Thank you.